Hi, I'm Ken Iverson. I'm a storyteller and I've lived in Portland for about 27 years. When I had first moved to Portland, a friend of mine's house was burglarized. If you were to ask him about it, he would just say, yes, yeah, some things were taken. Not much of a story. I started thinking back on that story because I was there when it happened. When I started thinking about the story, I started asking myself things that you might ask yourself if you were trying to recall a story from a little bit of a memory. I remembered when it happened. It was in the summer, just after the 4th of July, because the days were staying light, really late. And where it happened was in Northwest Portland, over on Overton Street, by 21st. And as soon as I started remembering that, I could picture my friend's front yard, and then I could remember each thing that happened. Several of us had gathered at our friend Gerald's house and decided to go to Wallace Park to play Frisbee. We got in the car, we drove to Wallace Park, we played Frisbee for a good, good while, and just as it was beginning to move into dusk, we stopped the game, packed up the Frisbee, and drove back to his house. As we pulled the car into the driveway, I noticed the gate that led to his backyard open, and somebody I didn't know come out. He was wearing a backpack, and he stopped, and he looked at us, then he turned and walked across the lawn and went up the street. We didn't think anything about it because there were other apartments and he might have been from one of them. We didn't know everybody. But there was something about the way he looked at us. And I thought back to that and I can actually even remember the way he looked at us very clearly. And I can remember wondering why he was looking at us that way. And then I heard the door open, Gerald went in, and just a minute later I heard the door open again, Gerald came running out yelling, somebody broke a window and broke in and took all the things I used for communion. Gerald was a priest, and all of his things had been stolen, all the things he used for communion. My friend Matthew and I decided to go and see if we could get the things back from this person who must have been the burglar. We turned and we went across the lawn onto the sidewalk and up the street, he was nowhere in sight. We cut behind a tavern that was at the end of the block to another street, and there he was. We saw the person, we called out to him, you know, hey, come back, just give us the stuff back, we'll let you go. He looked at us, then he turned and walked even more quickly. He wasn't running, he didn't want to attract attention of other people, I guess, but he walked quickly away. Matthew and I ran down the street toward him, but before we could catch up to him, we came to another corner, he turned and he went down another block. We had no idea if he was armed, but we really wanted to get Gerald's things back. Cautiously, we went around the corner, and I can remember that so clearly, just wondering if the person was armed and waiting for us. But he wasn't. He was nowhere in sight. But several doors that went into a business were along that part of the sidewalk. Matthew and I started walking down carefully, cautiously, and the person heard us, and all of a sudden he bolted from one doorway, and ran down the street and into a parking lot, and Matthew and I ran after him. And again, we called out to him and said, just give us back what you took. We'll let you go. He just walked faster, but I could walk faster than him. So with Matthew next to me, I walked up behind the person. I took both my arms, my hands, and put them under his arms and went up behind and then laced my fingers behind his neck in a wrestling hold called a full Nelson and stopped his forward movement. He started wrestling with me, so I dropped him to the ground and was holding him. He said, don't struggle, I don't want to hurt you, but we're gonna call the police. And then people came out of neighboring doorways and they said, what's going on? And we said, call the police, and they did. We held this person, and Matthew was looking because the person was flailing their arms around even though I had them tied up where they couldn't go anywhere. And suddenly my friend Matthew jumped back and he went, knife, he's got a knife. And we wrestled harder then. I put a lot more pressure on him and made him drop the knife. The police arrived and I gave him to the police and they put him in the car. They checked his bag, all of Gerald's things were there. They picked up the knife and it was, the police showed me it was serrated on both sides. They said, the only reason for a knife like that is to hurt people for slashing. They arrested the burglar, he went to jail. 
Gerald got all of his things back. So the burglar went to jail seemingly empty-handed, but not completely, because he did steal something precious that day. He took from me my feeling of safety in that neighborhood, my feeling of security living there. Neither he nor the police could give that back to me. I just want to encourage you. Think about things that have happened in your neighborhood. Interactions with neighbors that hopefully were more pleasant than the one I had with that one person who visited our neighborhood for reasons I wish he hadn't. But there's so much that goes on in a neighborhood that allows us to get to know our neighbors. It becomes wonderful stories. And the stories have smells and tastes and things that bring them completely alive. I encourage you, think about things that have happened to your neighborhood and share stories with your neighbors.